everybody, welcome back to... God, I forgot I still haven't come up with a name for this thing. Anyways, I'm Mac, I'm doing a series of videos about trying to build uh, my website. I'm not very good at it, so in order to stall, we're going through and trying to find like uh, the best text editor to use. We took a look at like plain text stuff, notepad, and text edit, and I feel like the next kind of natural progression of that is to open up the terminal because at least here on OS X, there's a text editor built into the terminal. It's called Emacs. I don't totally understand everything that the tool does, but I know that we can write HTML and CSS in it. So that's what we're gonna be using it for. Um, now real quick, if you don't have this installed, if, if it should be installed by default on OS X, I know I read that it was at one point in time, but if it isn't, all you need to do is follow the link in the description to go to uh, brew.sh.com. That's gonna take you to the homebrew webpage. And this is um, a, a, a package manager for, oh yeah, there we go, uh, a package manager for OS X. Basically this helps your, uh, if you don't know this, uh, a lot of people like to write code on Mac OS OS X uh, because it shares a common ancestor with Linux in Unix. So you, you can see the seams of that a little bit in the terminal and that the terminal on OS X and the terminal in a lot of Linux distributions function effectively the same way. So a lot of times, if you can do something on a Linux system, you can do it very similarly on an OSX system and even things that don't work by default. There's people who have built little tools to help you get there. So this is one of those tools. It's a package manager. All you need to do right here on the homepage of the website, they've got a little bit of code here. You paste that into the terminal and it will install Homebrew for you. Once you have Homebrew, you can use terminal the same way that you would be able to on an OSX system. So if we want to get Emacs, assuming that you don't have it, all you need to do is brew install Emacs dash dash with Coco. Coca. Yeah, I, I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. For some reason, that's giving me a little bit of trouble. And it's going to do its thing. I already have it installed, so I should probably go ahead and end the process here. Okay, cool. I feel like I'm making this way more complicated than it needs to be. From this point on, we have Emacs and it's ready to go. And the biggest challenge that you're going to run into writing code this way is that it's just a little bit complex. Like the app itself functions primarily on keyboard shortcuts that are a little funky, hard to remember, push not one, but two different keyboard shortcuts to both exit the application and save files from the application. It's weird. So what I would recommend, I feel like it kind of defeats the purpose. I feel like the reason that people would use Emacs is just because it's cool to be able to write code from the terminal. Um, anyways, there are uh, third party kind of containers that do essentially the same thing, but add buttons for opening files, saving files, that type of thing that make it a little easier to use. But once you've decided whether you're gonna go into the terminal or use an app, it's pretty easy to get started. All you gotta do is type in Emacs, E-M-A-C-S, and hit space, and then we're gonna type in the name of our new file. So in this case, we'll do CSS.CSS. And uh, that that's it, now we're ready to write. So let's go ahead and set up classes here. We'll do our body class. And, and this is gonna be sort of similar to writing inside of TextEdit in that we're not gonna get any autocomplete or anything. Uh, I haven't messed around with this enough to know anything about split screen, I'll just be perfectly honest with you. But the, the advantage that this will have over something like TextEdit or Notepad is that we're still kind of sort of writing plain text basically, but the tool, the system here knows what we're writing. Like it, it knows that we're writing CSS or HTML. It's not just assuming that we're writing text. Um, so it's gonna do automatic indentation. It's gonna color code tags and classes and things like that to make it easier to see. It's just, you get some support because the app that you're writing your code in actually knows that you're writing code, which seems like a given. And it will be once we get into uh, the other uh, text editors that I, that I wanna take a look at. But um, for now, this is a big step up from you know, just writing plain text. So we've got our class set up. I'm gonna do uh, background color equals RGB, zero for the red, 20 for the green, 35 for the blue. Close that tag, close that up. We'll go ahead and create another class for our header, call it H1. We'll come in here, we're gonna do text align to the center. And then we'll do, what are we doing? Oh yeah, top margin, 150 pixels. And then we need to do one more for our paragraph. And what all were we doing here? It was, uh, oh yeah, we need to change the color of the text. 
Whoops. Oh yeah. Okay. So one thing we should mention is that you don't have a cruiser uh, other than the, the arrow keys on the keyboard, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I mean, we're just writing text and generally I wouldn't reach for the mouse if I'm writing text anyways. But you know, if like in this case, I forgot to write something in this class up here and I need to jump up here to do it. That's generally when I would reach for the mouse and you don't realize that it's kind of a, an issue that you can't do that until you need to do it. So I don't know. I felt like that was something I should mention. There, there are a lot of quirks to this. I, I just want to be clear about that from the beginning. So we need to do color and we'll do RGB 250, 250, 250, which should be pure white. Make sure we close that. Um, this is one thing that I've seen uh, Emacs do that I, ha I don't think I've seen any other text editors do, at least not yet. Whenever you type a color value, it's going to try to preview that color for you. So I typed RGB 250, 250, 250, which is white. That section turns white. I typed kind of a tealish color up here and the thing turned blue. It's not doing a super good job of generating that color. So I don't know exactly what it's doing, but you know, it's making an effort, whatever. Anyways, we need to do, change the color of this text. We're gonna do RGB and we're just gonna do 200, 200, 200. That's gonna be more of an off white grayish color. And it's rendering that one really well. I don't know what's going on with the uh, first color. Maybe I typed it wrong. 0, 20, 35, no? I don't know, I don't wanna make myself sound stupid, so. We'll do um, text to the right. Oh, nope, margin right 10% and margin left 10%. Close that and close the class. Beautiful, so this is where things get kind of tricky. So uh, Emacs by default is gonna wanna save in your user folder and that's where we're gonna save it. So. We've got our CSS document with our three classes, one for the paragraph, one for the header. I didn't realize that I had a cold until I started recording the video. Anyways, we wanna save and it's tricky. So what we have to do is do control X and control S. And you'll notice we get a little message down here, wrote to users slash Mac, css.css. And sure enough, there is our CSS file. And then once we're ready to close out of the file, it's gonna be another kind of tricky keyboard shortcut. It's control C, oh, it's control, not command. I wanna be clear about that. If you're, if you're a Mac user, you have a command button and a control button. Control X and then control C. All right, and so now we're ready to create our HTML file. It's gonna be the same process. We're gonna type in Emacs and then do HTML.html. That's gonna be the name of our new file. And let's try to blast through this really quick here. Doc type HTML and HTML language equals English. Close out of that. Do head, head, title. It's gonna be hello world. Close the title tag. Link, link href equals css.css dot CSS relationship style sheet closing out of that one close the head tag now go ahead and open up our body and make sure that we include the body class that we set up so do body close out of that h1 include the class that we set up for that obviously we'll call it hello world close that h1 paragraph class equals p1 and then let's type a little sentence here quick Brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. You know what? Lazy cat. Cats can be lazy too. And we'll see if we can make a couple copies of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks terrible. But the good thing is HTML is not space sensitive. So it does not matter at all. And we're going to close the body tag, close the HTML tag, save the file. So control X, control S, save the file. Control X, control C. And we're exited. Now we are ready to test. So go ahead and open up this file here and everything is working except for something's not working. What is it? Oh, the top margin. What's going on there? Let me check on that real quick. Oh, I did it backwards. It's supposed to be margin top. All right, let's try that again. Okay, there we go, cool. So we got our website, we built it 99% of the way inside of Emacs and it was honestly not perfect. Not perfect. It's a step above text edit, writing in plain text because it actually knows that we're writing code, which is good. Uh, it's gonna color code the different elements. It's gonna help us out with the indentation to keep our files organized. It's not gonna do autocomplete. It's not gonna do split screen that I know of. And saving and opening and closing is a hassle. Like the keyboard shortcuts, like I get that it's a terminal app and so there's not really like a better way to do it, but I don't know, it's not great. If, 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 you, if you're just really into 
doing something that way. The thing is, I can imagine a person who really, really likes the idea of being able to and knowing how to write code well within the terminal, in part because I'm kind of that person. But it's just not, I don't know, there's a ton of better apps out there. So this one's doesn't really get the seal of approval or anything, if that means anything to you. I don't know, I feel like, I, I actually do feel like if I was on a system in a pinch, had no internet access, needed to write something, needed a text editor, and I had a choice between text edit and Emacs, I'd pick this, yeah, I'd pick this. Uh, you know, crappy, weird shortcuts and all. I, I think the, the automatic indentation and like the color coding of the different elements, it would be enough to for me to grab this over text edit. So, you know, whatever. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, uh, like. If you didn't, don't. What's the thing that that guy says? Dave Lee. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. That's it. I don't think I should steal that, but I don't know. It's cool. Watch his YouTube, watch his YouTube channel if you don't already. It's gotten pretty big. I've been watching it since it was relatively small, but... Uh, Check that out. He's he's uh, he does a lot of videos about um, keyboards, which is nice. That's kind of a weird niche that not a lot of people do. But if you like keyboards, I like keyboards. He likes keyboards. He makes great keyboard videos. I gotta call it there. See you next time. <laughs>